Gary, I mean, I would welcome you to uh, Autosport International 2018, but you're probably more a regular visitor here than even than, even than I am you, with yeah. your long career that you've had in motorsport. Yeah, actually, I mean, a uh, bit of a story. I was I was coming here before I was a racing driver, well, before I was a professional. Mm. So um, I used to work for, for Zipcart, the karting company I used to race for. And uh, I was up here on, on the stand working uh, for years before I came, became a, dri a racing driver. So I was up building the stand on a, on a Wednesday and then <laughs> up here all weekend selling carts and selling helmets and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, a few years after that, I was coming, uh, doing interviews. So, yeah, and I've been coming here doing interviews, uh, yeah, for probably 15 years now. So. And does it get any easier? <laughs> does what get any easier? <laughs> the interviews. Uh, well, the interviews as yeah. opposed to putting stands together. Yes, yes. The interviews is definitely easier than, uh, than rigging stands and lights and stuff. Yeah, I remember actually climbing on top of the rigging once, which, thinking back now, probably wasn't very clever. But, you know, that's <laughs> what we did at the it's time. One of the jobs so, you have to do. Yeah, so doing interviews is definitely easier than selling carts here, yeah. Okay, and so tell, tell us about 2017, uh, the DCM season. Yeah. Were you happy with that at the end of the? Um, I mean, yes and no, really. Mm. Um, you know, I think in the past, the DCM is such a tough competition that uh, you, ca you can't go into it expecting to win or even expecting to fight for the championship. You know, you, you want to produce the best you can. Uh, you're never quite sure exactly how competitive the cars are going to be. You know, we're, we're, we're talking competitiveness in, in cars there's only three brands, but the, the gaps are so small that if you're two or three tenths off, that's it, you're off the pace completely, mm -hmm. um, which is so different to any other motorsport series. You know, you can be two or three tenths off and be second on the grid, but in DCM, if you're that far off, um, you're outside the top 10. Uh, so some weekends we had, we had a competitive car, some weekends we didn't. Um, and just maybe not through luck or when we got it together, that. My, my car and my, me and my engineers managed to get it together and have good weekends when the car maybe wasn't great and, mm -hmm. and sort of scoring fourth place or getting in the points when my other teammates couldn't. Mm -hmm. And then when we had weekends when the car was very strong, uh, we either had a, uh, made a mistake or, or, or had a bit of bad luck and didn't get the wins that my teammates mm -hmm. were getting. So overall, I think over the year, we were very consistent, scored more points, more, more points finishes than any other Mercedes car. Mm -hmm. um, so... It was a really solid year, solid year and, and really consistent, but like I said, just not enough sort of the, the spectacular highlight sort of <laughs> results that we'd want. Um, obviously, I had, a, I had a big, big crash at Norris Ring in, in mm. the middle of the year. Uh, so that was a, a spectacular event, not in the, in the, in the, in the positive term. Um, so that had some, made, give, us, give us something to sort of try and get over. But that's, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, after that, I think we, we, we did okay for the rest of the year and, and finished pretty strong. So mm. a pretty solid year, but, but uh, just not quite uh, getting the, the, the really strong results that we'd like. You haven't really got to the highs. And, and you're, you're completely well now in this freezing cold uh, British winter. <laughs> yeah. No, no trouble with the joints? Or... No, 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 exa no, exactly. I'm getting, <laughs> getting, getting, getting a bit old, but managing to stay fit and stuff. And uh, yeah, so struggling. Well, not struggling, but uh, managed to avoiding the, the colds and everything from the winter and, and getting <laughs> sort of uh, back to training now, ready for, yeah. ready for the new season. Okay, and DTM 2018, um, any expectations or? Again, it's, it's so hard to expect anything from DTM. Yeah. We, we have 18 cars on the grid and um, genuinely 18 people that can win a championship. But I think if you look, I, I haven't counted up this year, but we, we probably have between seven, eight, nine former champions in the series. Mm. And, and this isn't because we're not very consistent as drivers. This is because any, any one mm. of the 16 drivers can win the championship. Rene Rast uh, last year was a rookie in the DTM. Okay, he'd done one or two races the year before, yeah. but he was a rookie in the series um, and won the championship. Um, you know, and it's, um, it's, I say it's so competitive that you have to be on, 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 on top form, on your game, also have a bit of luck all the time. So. What we expect is to, to get the best out of ourselves, to do the best job we possibly can with the car mm -hmm. we have. Uh, obviously, a few regulation changes around the, mainly the aerodynamics of the car yeah. this year. So um, there's yeah, a few things that we don't know about how competitive our car is going to be. Hopefully, we'll be, we'll be there with the others. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll be very close to the, to the front. And then we just have to try and maximize the results. And that's what it's yeah. all about. So I'm really happy with the way the team's working. Uh, Mercedes, we have a great team of drivers and, and mm -hmm. a great team of, uh, of engineers. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to have a good year. Um, how good is very difficult to say at the moment, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think the DTM as a series is getting, is getting stronger. I mean, mm. the, the, the sort of headline is that it's Mercedes last year in the DTM, yes. um, which is, is a great shame. Um, but the series itself is, is, 
in a strong state. You know, with yeah. the with the drivers we have, um, the 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 biggest positive for this year is that we're coming back to Brands Hatch, um, which is which is massive for for the British supporters and for myself. Um, it's going to be a challenge. I mean, yeah. You know, we last time we were at Brands Hatch in 2012 uh, or 13, we raced on the Indy circuit for a couple of years. Um, yeah, and this um, year you're on the full Grand, on Prix, the Grand circuit. Prix circuit. Now, I, I've had people who are far more expert than I am saying, well, maybe that's not the best track for a DTM car. What, what's your point of view? I honestly haven't driven that track since uh, <laughs> since 2000, so 17 years ago. So uh, 18 I don't think years it's changed ago. much. No, it's changed a bit, but <laughs> from what I remember, it was pretty scary in an F3 car. Uh, these cars are a lot heavier and mm -hmm. quicker. Um, so I think it's going to be a real challenge. I think it's, I, I can probably go out and say it's going to be the most challenging circuit of the year for the drivers. It, it really right. is. I mean, the, the Indy circuit was was incredibly tough because it was so short. And the, the type of corners you have, you know, paddock hill, hill bend, you don't have any long straights. You don't have any straights. You're always turning, you're always working. Um, you add to that the high speed section around the back of the Grand Prix circuit. And, and you've got something that's going to strike fear into most of the drivers, probably including myself. So it's, um, no, Brands Hatch is going to be a massive challenge for everybody. Uh, so um, I think it's, it's not going to be, I don't know, I'm not saying people aren't going to enjoy it, but people are going to be uh, fearful of it, I would say, yeah. Okay. So this season is a bit of a last hurrah for Mercedes in, in DTM, as you yep. say. And you're already um, looking in some other areas. I understand you're going to be in Marrakesh next week. Tell yep. us about the Formula E test. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, obviously, Mercedes are, are moving from, from DTM, moving over to do Formula E. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's a shame that they're leaving the DTM because they've been part of the series uh, forever, you know. Um, so it'll be, it'd be quite strange not to have them in there. But yeah, they're moving into Formula E, which is a real growing, developing market, and, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a series that's really taking off. Um, and it's something that I'm interested in, and, and I'm very lucky to be able to get the chance to, uh, to test uh, on Sunday, so this Sunday with, uh, with Venturi, mm -hmm. uh, out in Marrakesh to do well, the, the, the rookie test day. Um, and it's, it's something that's really interesting. You know, I did a, a seat fit and a simulator session with them. Um, first of all, going to Monaco, for a seat fit in a simulator session is yeah, quite it's bizarre. quite the opposite, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> for most of yeah, so, so yeah, so on the, on, in the, their office on the top floor of a Skyrise in Monaco, the view mm -hmm. out there is quite different yes. to most of, most of the grim offices you get. But, um, but that was good, but it really opened my eyes to, to Formula E and, and mm -hmm. what it's about, what the racing's about especially. And it's really interesting. I mean, it's, it's, mm. it's something so, um, some parts of it, like the qualifying, things like that, are, are, are exactly like you'd expect from any yeah. motorsport series. Uh, the racing is so different, and, mm -hmm. it's, and it really gives you something to think about. And I think that's really good um, from a driver point of view, because the yeah. driver is really in control of not only driving the car fast, but, but, but making sure you maximize the energy you have. And some people would say it's not really racing, but I think it is. It's something different mm -hmm. for the drivers to do. Um, so I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, and that, that first uh, simulated session, uh, did you sort of get the feel for the unusual effects under braking with the energy recovery and the... Yeah, I mean, you do. I mean, it's, it's difficult. Based on the simulator, they're developing the simulator all the time, mm. so you don't get everything you need uh, from that, like you don't get from every simulator. Every, every simulator, as well as good as they are, you still miss some feelings. Uh, so there will still be stuff that will surprise me uh, out in Marrakesh, but I did get a feeling of, of um, some of the... The problems I hear from the drivers with mm -hmm. you know the, the the braking system working with the energy recovery system that yep. changes lap to lap and the brake balance. There's a lot to do as a mm. driver. Yeah, there's a lot to take in, and uh, you even you see in the races, uh, the drivers get caught out a lot with the yep. braking especially. So um, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Okay. Now. You've obviously done a lot of simulator work uh, recently with, with McLaren, with yeah. Williams, and you, you know, were a test driver at McLaren. When was the last time you actually ran a single seater on track? Well, actually, I, I, I did the test in Bahrain last year for Williams. Uh, oh, nice. So I did that back in, uh, I think it was April last year, um, which went really well. So that was my first test in a, <laughs> first actual test in an F1 car for um, real test for, uh, since 2013. I've driven the Williams on uh, some filming days and stuff before that. So I'd been oh, okay. in the car on a circuit. So I think, Regularly, I've been in the car doing something, but actual for a, a, a proper test in a in a single seater, yeah, Bahrain was was it, um, and it went well. So I was pretty happy with that. And uh, so I, I haven't raced one for a long time, but I've but I've been in them and tested them. So I don't think that'll be too much of a shock. 
Okay, and you think you could be having some discussions with teams for uh, subsequent seasons in Formula E, or are you happy to stay in DTM? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's difficult to say. I mean, with, with Mercedes leaving the DTM, mm -hmm. for me to stay in the DTM would mean going to another manufacturer, which is yeah. obviously not something I want to do, but you, you never know what, what opportunities come up. And, uh, you know, Mercedes have been, have been great with everything. You know, they realize that some of the drivers and everybody's in a bit of a bad position, so they, they've been great in, in helping us out and in giving us a bit of freedom of what to do. So... I'm exploring opportunities, you know, but um, the link with Mercedes going to, to Formula E is the main thing I'm pursuing at the moment, um, alongside, obviously, trying to uh, be successful in the DTM this year. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a mixture between, you know, everybody's in a bit of a mix between really trying to focus on the DTM, and that's the mm -hmm. most important thing at the moment. Yeah. But obviously, every year has an end date, and everybody's looking to do something beyond that. So um, I think the Formula E is the one thing that I'm, I'm looking at mainly at the moment, but I'm also keeping my eyes open about other possibilities and what else might be around. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty open to, to, to try new things. So who knows where I'll end up.